Good evening, everyone. I'm Marcus Ticaris, and I'm in grade 9. Before I begin, I want to briefly talk about why this topic holds a special place in my heart. As you might have guessed from the title, I'm very passionate about computers and computer science. I was about six years old when I noticed my father, who is a pilot, working on a second degree in computer science and writing Java code. At the time, I had no idea what all of this was, but it looked interesting. So I asked him, can you explain to me how I can create applications and tell a computer to do anything using this coding thing? And I loved it. So I found some videos on YouTube and started playing Java. I created a couple of projects and I was intrigued by what was now possible. However, I didn't code that much back then, and there was even a period of time where I kind of forgot about this whole thing. First forward to 2020, during quarantine, I decided to pick it up again and delve deeper into it. This is also when I became more interested in the history of the field, both in hardware and software. I started learning Python because it seemed like a good language, which was relatively easy because I already knew the basics. From then, I have expanded my knowledge to other languages as C, C++, Rust, and also JavaScript web development, and it has ever since been my passion. So, without further ado, let's begin. Imagine a time when computers were massive machines filling entire rooms and their capabilities were limited to basic calculations. A massive machine developed during World War II for military calculations, ENIAC, with its thousands of vacuums back at the beginning of electronic computing. It took, an it took up an entire room and it was used for complex calculations, including trajectory calculations for artillery. Vacuum tubes operated by controlling the flow of electrons between a heated cathode and a positively charged anode sealed in inside a glass case. However, they were even prone to failure due to factors like overheating, the limited lifetime of the cathode, and the fragile energy of the glass envelope, which resulted in frequent costly replacements. As technology progressed, the era of vacuum tubes came to an end with <coughs> an evolutionary discovery of the transistor in the 1950s and 1960s, leading to the development of smaller and more efficient computers. The transition no longer suffered from the weak points of the vacuum tube, as it had no moving or fragile parts, relying on semiconductor materials instead, such as silicon, to control the flow of electrons. This era also saw the introduction of punch cards for input and output, making programming more accessible, allowing users to provide instructions to these machines. The 1960s and 1970s witnessed the advent of mainframe computers, which became the backbone of large-scale data processing for companies and organizations. During this time, magnetic tape and magnetic tests started being used as early forms of data storage. The 1980s marked a pivotal moment with the rise of personal computers. Companies like Apple, IBM, and Commodore played significant roles in bringing compute power to individuals. The iconic Commodore 64 and Apple II became symbols of the era, uh, making computing a household concept. Graphical user interfaces and operating system Microsoft MS-DOS became prevalent, further enhancing user interactions. The 1990s saw the World Wide Web revolutionize communication and information sharing. The internet became a global network, enabling people to connect and share data across the world. The introduction of browsers made the web more accessible to the general public, paving the way for the digital age of today. Entering the 21st century, the focus shifted to mobile computing with the emergence of smartphones. Smartphones felt computing power, internet access, and a myriad of applications in people's pockets. This marks the transformative shift in how individuals interact with technology, leading to the mobile-centric world we live today. As we progress further into the 21st century, artificial intelligence has become a driving force in computing. Machine learning algorithms enable computers to learn and adapt, impact the such as image recognition, natural language processing, and autonomous systems. Additionally, quantum computing holds the promise of solving complex problems that can be paralyzed at speeds unimaginable classical computers, but that's really revolutionizing fields like cryptography, optimization, and scientific research. The impact of computers in our history is undeniable, but in the several evolving landscape, something has remained constant. Amidst the technological leaps, the art of computer programming has endured. Even though programming languages have evolved from early machine code and assembly languages to higher languages like Python, the answer of programming, the algorithm, has remained beyond syntax. Let's take a look at an example. Imagine you're trying to navigate through a map and find the closest path to your destination. So, you start by looking at the streets directly connected to your current location. You calculate the distance from your starting point to each of these streets and all down the values. Now, you focus on the street with the shortest distance, as it seems like the most efficient route at the moment. Once you've chosen the storage street, you move to the intersection at the end of the street and repeat the process. You consider all the streets connected to this new intersection, calculate the distances, and select the shortest one. Gradually, you're navigating through the map, always choosing the shortest path at each intersection, and making sure you never visit the same street twice. This step-by-step -step process of selecting the shortest street at each intersection and moving to the next is like unwinding a threat to the city, guiding you to your destination with the least distance traveled. 
Once you find the path to your destination, you have all discovered the shortest path to any destination for your static mode. You have just discovered an algorithm in computer science known as Dijkstra's algorithm, which efficiently finds the shortest path in all kinds of networks, and not just maps. Quoting from Edgar Dijkstra himself, the very influential computer scientist who created this algorithm, one of the reasons that it's so nice was that I designed it without using pencil or paper. I later learned that one of the advantages of designing without pencil and paper is that it almost forced to avoid all avoidable complexities. He also said simplicity is a prerequisite for reliability. When Dijkstra talks about simplicity, he means creating solutions that are unnecessarily complicated. Simplicity doesn't imply that the problems themselves are easy. Rather, it's about presenting a solution in a clear and uncomplicated way. Let's take a look at that example. Imagine you're at the library and you're trying to find a book. You know that the shelves are absolutely alphabetically, however, you don't know exactly where the letter is. Instead of setting it in the middle yourself, which would take too long, you first check the title of the book in the middle. If the title you're looking for comes after the middle point, you can eliminate the first half of the library. Now you focus on the remaining half. You go to the middle of the remaining section, check the titles, and again decide whether to focus on the left or the right. Gradually, you're zooming on the specific cells that contain the book you need. You have discovered an algorithm called binary search, where you systematically divide the search space in half of each step, reaching your target more efficiently. This process is inspired by the idea that you can leverage the organization of the library to your advantage. As we already know that the right side will be higher and the left side will be lower. Binary search is just a way to find books. It's a systematic approach that can be applied in various situations when you need to locate something that's sort of this, making the process more efficient and less time consuming. In fact, the whole idea of dividing large problems to smaller problems is a very elegant approach often used in computer science called divine and By breaking down complex tasks into smaller, more manageable parts, you can efficiently edit this component gradually solving the overall problem. What makes programming an art is the creativity involved. We have touched on today is just the tip of the iceberg. We, programmers, are not just engineers. We are artists, designing elegant solutions, expressing ideas through code, and continually refining and optimizing our code, eliminating unnecessary complexity. The code becomes a medium of expression, where creativity intertwines functionality, and we craft not just a program, but a digital symphony that resonates with efficiency and elegance. Thank you all for joining me today.